you're at this video, then you probably already know that there will be a total eclipse of the Sun on August 21st, 2017, with a path across the United States from Oregon to South Carolina. There are lots of good websites and other sources about where to go to watch the eclipse. The important thing is, be in the path. That's the narrow band shown on this map. Unlike horseshoes and hand grenades, close doesn't count. You must be in the path to experience the full, mind-blowing effects of the total eclipse. Notice I said experience and not see the eclipse, as a total eclipse of the sun is a truly profound, emotional, and even fearsome phenomenon. And I will add that the total eclipse is an audience participation event. So get with the group, organized or not, to fully enjoy the experience. Outside of the path, you will merely see a partial eclipse, which is kind of interesting, but meh. During totality, that is when the moon completely blocks the face of the sun, it is safe to look directly at it. Use binoculars, telescopes, cameras, and your naked eyes with impunity. No filter. If you used a filter during totality, you would see nothing. However, during the partial phases, before and after the moon completely blocks the face of the sun, you cannot look directly at it, and you must have a proper filter to protect your eyes and equipment. So why can't you look at the sun when it isn't completely blocked by the moon? Well, remember as a kid when you learned to light a fire using a magnifying glass? Here's what will happen if you try to look at the sun through binoculars or a telescope without a filter. <coughs> and what about your camera? Do you want to melt the CCD in your brand new $1,200 Nikon? Nope, you can't do it. It's worth repeating. You must use a filter to view the sun when it's not fully eclipsed, whether looking with just your eyes or through binoculars, telescope, or camera. If you're looking with just your eyes, use a pair of eclipse glasses like this. You can get them through many sources online, and many places hosting eclipse events will have them. You can also get professionally made filters for your camera or telescope. These aren't cheap, but if you're going to be using them more than once or have expensive equipment, they're probably worth the investment. What we're going to be making is homemade filters to fit over your camera or binoculars. Are we ready? Okay, let's get our equipment. Well, what are we doing here? We've got to find just the right fitting to fit over the lens of our binoculars. It's what will fit your equipment, not mine. Go ahead and bring your binoculars to the store. Not only can you try the various fittings on for size, but you'll amuse the other customers. The fitting should be not more than a quarter inch larger than the lens you want to fit it over. Let's try this two inch PVC pipe junction. No, it's too small. That's not going to fit. All right, let's try a three inch fitting. Oh, that one is obviously way too big. It would fall off as the binoculars hung around our neck. Let's try something else. This is interesting. It's a pipe drain with a plastic grid over it, but look, it just about fits over the lens of our binoculars um, with a little room to spare that we can shim later on. We can cut that grid out. Okay, let's use it. Okay, we're back from the hardware store. Our first consideration is what to use for filter material. The key is that it must block enough light, visible light, ultraviolet, and infrared, to prevent your eyes and your equipment from melting. There's only three materials safe to use. Solar optical film, solar optical glass, or welder's glass grade 13 or higher. For this demonstration and our filters, we're going to use solar optical film I purchased from an astronomical supply company. Now, there are some things you cannot use to make your filters. No sunglasses, whether perched on your nose or over your equipment. Not photo negatives, no matter how many layers thick. Not mylar balloons. Not floppy disks, if you still have them, or CDs. Not food packaging film, and not saran wrap with shoe polish. Yes, I've actually heard. Okay, getting ready to mount our solar optical film onto the mount we got at the hardware store. First, let's make sure it's sound. Keep it flat with no folds or creases, then hold it up to the sun or shine a bright light through it to make sure there's no pinholes. If it's damaged, throw it out and use another piece. This one seems fine, and I've already cut it down to size to make it easier to work with. 
You can see I've cut the cross hatching out of the drain insert I got at the hardware store to use as a mount. I'm going to cut the film even smaller to just a little larger than the size of the mount. Then I'm going to use some super glue. This is the gel type. I found that the liquid type of super glue didn't really hold. And notice that I'm wearing latex gloves for this process. There's two kinds of people when working with super glue those who wear gloves and those who will next time. Put a thin bead of glue around the flange, like so. Then gently, gently press the glued flange onto our solar optical filter. I'm going to put a little bit of weight on it and let it sit for a few minutes. And here we are 15 minutes later. Our solar optical film is firmly attached to the mount. All we need to do is take this razor knife and gently, carefully, slice away the excess film. I found that scissors work just as well. Either way, take your time and be careful not to tear the filter film as you work your way around. Almost done. And there we go. Our filter is complete. But we're not quite done yet. As you remember, the filter mount we got at the hardware store was not snug, but just a little bit bigger than the lens of our binoculars. So we're going to have to shim it to make sure it doesn't fall off as it's hanging around your neck, or worse, as you're looking at the sun. For a shim, I'm using a piece of padding made for the feet of a chair or table to prevent it from scarring your floor. You might also use moleskin like you would put on a blister or a felt insulation material to be used around a window or door. Whatever you use, we're going to cut it to the right size, then peel off the adhesive backing. so and carefully press it on the inside of our filter mount. There we go. Now let's give it a try. I'll hold it so you can see what I'm doing. Yes, and there we have it. Our filter and mount fits snugly on the lens of our binoculars. That's not going to fall off. And there we have it, solar filters for your binoculars, ready to view the sun during the eclipse of 2017. Let's recap for safety. Whenever looking at the uneclipsed sun, or any partial phase of the eclipse, you must use solar filters such as we made today. But when the moon completely covers the face of the sun, and the eclipse is total, you can look directly at it with your eyes, binoculars, or camera. Enjoy the eclipse and I'll see you in the shadow.